it is officially time. It's been about 40 days or so that I've been mostly inside, social distancing, staying to myself. So I think I need some exercise besides the little trail right by my house. I looked up parks and trails near where I live and near Walt Disney World because I live near Walt Disney World and I found that Orange County Florida parks are open for exercise, walking the trails, as long as we're keeping our social distance, not congregating all up in areas or getting all up in each other's space, which no one is. I've seen a few people here and there, but everybody's keeping their space, which is nice. This park has several different trails. None of them are incredibly long or overwhelming. You could do all of them and get a few miles in, which is great. You could do a short trail or a longer trail, depending on what you want out of the day. If you're visiting Walt Disney World and you have a day or a morning off and you wanna see some beautiful, Florida nature, and yes, that includes the bugs, and maybe some wildlife, and get a hike in, get a walk in. This might be a great place to do it, and I am going to check it out today for you, and also for me, because I need some exercise, I need some fresh air, and I need some nature. So let's combine those two forces into one powerful force and go on a nature walk. Oh, the love bugs are back, you guys. They're back. Okay, let's go. This is Pine Circle. It's Pine Flatwoods. So I think today we'll walk about a mile and just see if we can see any wildlife and nature and enjoy the day together. Seeing felled trees on nature trails is always so cool. As it fell over for whatever reason, you can see the whole root system exposed. It's cool to see like ants and lizards and bugs make their life here. See, there's the trunk right there. And it goes out really far, so clearly it was a tall tree that fell over. We've come to a fork in the road here. We can either go left or we can go straight. There's a sign here that points that this way is the Screech Owl Trail. As you enter the base swamp, notice the dark soil and soft ground. This trail is flooded many times throughout the year. It leads to the boardwalk on Fallen Log Crossing. A lot of ferns and more sunlight coming out. Oh, that's nice. Much, much needed. I've been spending a lot of time indoors, as I mentioned, because of everything that's going on and I haven't been getting as much sun or exercise as I'm used to. I have been going for walks and trying to exercise at home. Here comes a little muddy patch. So be careful, watch where you're walking and then we get back to the soft grass. But it is not the same as being out and walking like 10 miles a day at a theme park like I'm used to. So I need to get back in the swing of things and get exercise in a safe and responsible way. The trail thins out here. And you're a lot of birds and scuttering about. Oh, look, it's one of those rocks. It says trust on it. I know that people paint these rocks and leave them in like trails and parks and anywhere where other people are. And then people collect them and maybe replace them with another one or something like that. I'm not gonna take this. I'll leave this for the next person because I'm gonna capture it in a photograph and video. I got down next to it and took some pictures. It. I love that people do this. It's such a like nice non-intrusive way to send just a, like a little a little wink, a little nod, a little smile to strangers. Whoever did this, good job. I'll leave it for the next hiker. Here's a big root of this tree right here. It's kind of a little muddy here and it's raised up from the ground with a little bit of a nook and some cracks in there. Definitely a good place for wildlife to chill out, make little homes or nooks. It is uh, rooty and rocky with different levels that you walk through, which I quite enjoy on a trail. I like a little bit of an obstacle course or on the Screech Owl Trail. We'll keep walking. The trail sometimes goes from mud to rocks to grass, different types of grass, 
and we're about to get on a different part of the trail that I see a lot of people on, so we'll wait a second. Now here's something cool and cheerful. When we started out today, the sky was completely flat. It was white and gray, and now it's blue, and the sun's come out. That always helps. The next part of the trail is a boardwalk, and these are the pictures that I saw online, this boardwalk. There are quite a few people walking, so I'm gonna keep my distance like a lizard. Okay, there were some people walking by, I waited, and now I've got the boardwalk to myself. It's always nice to walk on a boardwalk. It's pretty common for Florida parks, and it's very pleasant. And it's more accessible than the kind of rooty trails with different terrain like mud and rocks and things like that. Anyone can walk on this boardwalk. People of all ages. The dragonfly. When you look up pictures of Tibet Butler Preserve online, you're gonna see pictures of this boardwalk. And you get to it pretty easily through multiple paths, but I chose the path I chose and we got here. This is a lovely, lovely trail. The sun is out and blasting. <laughs> I almost didn't come out today because I thought it was gonna rain all day. I'm glad I trusted my instinct and did come though because this is Florida. It never rains for long. I downloaded this chill app and it gives you notifications with like zen thoughts of the day and it just buzzed and it said, oh. <laughs> Feel for the quiet kindness that's inside you. Give it your attention. Will do. All sorts of birds that I can hear but not quite see. I have no idea what that noise is. <gasps> oh my gosh, look at that bird. I think it's a heron. I think it's a blue heron. I'm glad I turned around. It's walking through a very swampy area. See how it looks like a flat surface, but it's really water. Oh! Uh, that was cool. As I was saying, it's very swampy here, like the Everglades, where it's shallow water. A lot of wildlife makes their home in water like this. I can see a little movement of fish and tadpoles. I can see dragonflies everywhere. And then that surface right there looks like a flat surface, but no, nope, it's water. Oh, this is cool. Okay, at least we saw one awesome bird, a dragonfly, and some lizards. Lots of bugs and a red leaf. I'm cheered up already. I took my phone out because now <laughs> if I see a heron or any other type of beautiful bird like that again, I want to be able to get a good picture if I can. So I'll be ready even though I've got different things in my hands, I'll still be ready. Look at how beautiful this part of the trail that we're coming up upon is. When the railings to the boardwalk end, the boardwalk continues for a little bit, and then I can see up ahead, the boardwalk ends and we're back on the forest floor. I'm calling this a forest, it's a nature preserve, but it's a Florida forest. I'd say it's Florida forest. So you've got to step down here. There is a ramp on the other side, but on this end, it's a step down. Just so you know. Here the floor is covered with pine needles that have turned red from the sun. The dappled sunlight is so beautiful. Now after this pine floor trail, it opens up onto a bit of a clearing, a very, very wide part of the trail, wide and flat. <sighs> Feels so good to get some sun. If you look right there, right in the middle of the screen, there's like a birdhouse, or a birdhouse, maybe a pet house, something like that right there. And then the sign that I came upon, predators in the sky. During a hike, it is easy to overlook the wildlife in the sky. Look up, 
The preserve is home to many birds of prey such as red-shouldered hawks, turkey vultures, ospreys, and eagles. They eat rats, mice, rabbit, fish, carrion, and other birds. On sunny days, birds of prey soar in warm columns of air to defend territories, hunt for prey, look for mates, or just fly around. On this hike, enjoy these graceful hunters. I've always got an eye out for hawks, but so far all I see is lots and lots of dragonflies. Let's keep moving. As some of you know, I moved to Orlando from Miami. I'm a lifelong Floridian. I was born and raised in South Florida, but I recently made the move to Orlando, Florida. Now down near Miami and South Florida, I knew all the trails, I knew all the parks, I knew all the beaches, I had all my favorite spots. And I've been coming to Orlando pretty much every weekend for years, so I know the area very well, but I don't have like all my local favorites yet. And I've been meaning to scope out like my favorite trails and places to walk and get fresh air and nature. And as you can see, I'm huffing and puffing a little bit because I just haven't been getting enough exercise with being in this quarantine thing. Um, but anyway, I think I found one of my favorite local trails. It's really, really close to me. It's really, really close to the Disney Park. So for you guys, if you're a local or you'll be visiting the area and you're looking for some nature, I think we found a winner. Let's, let's keep walking. Come on. Come on. All right, we're heading back onto the boardwalk. I'm going to take a look in that pond marshy area again to see if we can see any more birds. It's only April here in Florida, but it is a very hot and muggy day. It started out rainy and it turned into a beautiful bright day, but it is muggy. So be prepared for the unexpected when you're in Florida. You probably already know this, but just in case you don't, Florida weather is unpredictable. I'm a Floridian, so I'm used to it. So I like to wear leggings, wear a hat, wear sunglasses, be prepared. Let's go. After placing my camera on one of these to film that last bit, there was a little ant on my camera. I helped him escape though, don't worry. No ant will be harmed in the making of this video. I know I've already said dappled sunlight, but check out that dapple. Oh, and look at the canopy. You can see a lot of shallow water here that wading birds like to hunt and feed in. There's that noise again. No, I don't see any birds. I know they're in there, but they're good at hiding. Good for you birds, you hid from me. Good for you. I always notice when there's like one fresh board <laughs> in a boardwalk. You know, that was replaced recently, so it's a little shorter than the other boards. There's a large gray cloud rolling in over the sun and rolling in over this whole half of the sky. It's still pretty blue over here, but my spidey senses are tingling that it's gonna rain again. So we're gonna hightail it towards the front of the park. I'm working up a sweat and that is a good thing. That makes me really, really happy. Okay, we just went through Fallen Log Crossing, a bay swamp where water levels fluctuate with the seasons. Part of this trail may be wet during rainy weather and that's why the boardwalk is there. And we just did that. And now we're going back. And we're back on the soft, mushy grass. <sighs> That's nice. That was a pretty good walk. Um, there's a turtle here. Hi. Hi, turtle. Oh my gosh. What are you doing? Oh, you're beautiful. Oh my goodness. You having a little lunch, buddy? He's moving really fast. I thought turtles were supposed to be slow. Look how fast he's going.
I'm struggling to keep up with them. Well, that's a cool unexpected surprise. I wonder if there's a sign or something. Hi. Okay, I said turtle like 20 times. This is Darwin, a sulcata tortoise. Bye, Darwin. So we started here, we did a little bit of the Pine Circle Trail, and then we went out this way to Fallen Log Crossing. We went out to Osprey Outlook type of area, to the marshy area. We saw some birds. We walked around a little bit back this way, and then we just came right back this way. That's what I think we did. And it was really fun and beautiful. As you can see here from the legend, the brown area is the boardwalk that we walked on here, heading out to Fallen Log Crossing right there so we had a nice healthy walk today we didn't see any alligators or snakes but they're definitely out there they're definitely out there the environmental center is closed but normally it's open and when things open back up and it's okay for everything to be open again this will also be open again so i'll come back to pay that a visit you are standing along the historic route of the conquistador Hernando de Soto and his expedition through the Florida Native American territories in his quest for gold and glory. We are here. Outside of the nature preserve, there's this pollinator garden. It's got this cool sign. This garden is for the birds and it's got all sorts of plants and flowers that are meant to attract pollinators like bees, butterflies, moths, birds, and other insects so that they will cross-pollinate and keep everything healthy here. The tortoises that live here at Tibet Butler Preserve were injured and cannot be returned to the wild. They live in special burrows designed so that they can be removed easily during severe weather or to help teach the public about tortoises. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Oh, there's one right there. Oh, there's their little hut that they live in. habitat here's another and it looks like this is a third and then there's the one that we saw in the back or maybe this isn't one not sure oh there's a water bowl mm. I don't see it though oh my gosh is that it look at how tiny it is look at how tiny it is Oh my goodness, that is a tiny, tiny little fellow. <laughs> That's not a real tortoise, but it's cute. We're gonna wrap things up right here in the pollinator garden. This was definitely fun, much, much needed, very beautiful. I like the different types of trails that you can walk on, whether there are boardwalks or soft grass, rocks, pine needles, all the different layers and textures. It's very, very beautiful and relaxing. I will definitely be back. And it's, like I said, about 15 minutes from the Walt Disney World area. So if you're on an extended trip here or if you are a local here also looking for another fun park, I do recommend it, I can say. I do, and I will be back to walk more of the trails and explore more. Now I can feel the thick layer of humidity in the air. I'm sweating. It feels so, so good. But it's time to go home, have a shower, edit this video, and soak in the happy, wonderful feelings I got from being out in nature today. And uh, yeah, wonderful, wonderful day. It's good to be back out. Not just vlogging, but out for myself. Oh, I felt rain. I felt drops of rain. All right, let's get out of here, you guys. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed already. We have lots of adventures, whether indoors or outdoors. Also, you can now become a channel member, and if you do, you get a cool emoji 
thing next to your name, a loyalty badge that my friend Josh from Practically Perfect Park Hopping designed and they're really, really cool. So if you want a little thing next to your name and to help support the channel, that is one way you can do it if you are able. Thank you, thank you, thank you again for going on this lovely, fun adventure with me. I'll see you next time and until then, stay dry <laughs> and stay enthused, bye!